Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to day one of Security Breach Week. Nine deep analysis videos on the upcoming FNAF title being made by Steelwolf Studios FNAF, again, Security Breach. Today, the topic at hand is one that some may think is pretty underwhelming, but I personally find this topic one of the most intriguing pieces of the game that we have yet to fully understand. And that's kind of the whole point of Security Breach Week, taking a simple topic and going more in depth with it. So for today, the first day, I want to take a look at the Fazbear wristwatch being worn by Gregory. Because I feel like it's a piece of the game that a lot of people took a look at, thought about it for a little bit, and then kind of left it in the dust. Well again, I think the wristwatch is a great way to look at some of the new mechanics being introduced in the new game. So let's not waste any more time. First off, let's have a look at the wristwatch itself. So as you can see in several shots, most notably the close-up shot where we are in the cameras tab, we'll get to that in a little bit. The wristwatch is very obviously themed around our main man Freddy Fazbear. We can also see the Freddy Fazbear themed wristwatch advertised in a West Arcade poster that shows a breakdown to some of the inner workings and mechanics of the watch itself. I think it's pretty safe to say that this wristwatch is most likely a quick nod to Disney's Magic Band wristwatch, which grants guests access to the entirety of the Disneyland theme park. So I think when Gregory arrived at the Pizzaplex, almost every single guest is given this band. Because this isn't the only parallel to Disney in FNAF Security Breach. If you don't know, the underground corridors are called the Utilidors, which is a real thing in Disneyland used by employees dressed up as the mascots to move quickly from one part of the map to the other. So while I think the watch itself has a very big mechanical role in the game, it could also be a souvenir, or again, something that people use to access the entirety of the Pizzaplex. I think it could have a lot deeper of a meaning than just a mechanic for the new game. I mean, think about it. There's a lot of attractions here. You got a salon, you got a raceway, you got mini golf. So I think in order to play all of these attractions, guests of the Pizzaplex need to buy this Freddy Fazbear themed watch. Now, why the watches would have cameras built in, I got no freaking clue. Instead of the guests, it could be used for the staff members of the Pizzaplex. Then, that would make sense why there are cameras on the watch. Though, it also wouldn't make sense exactly why they would be advertised in the West Hall to the arcade. Anyways, going back to the watch itself, there was a time of 12.09 a.m. displayed at the top. Based off of that, and also based off of Vanessa's voice line of We have to get you out by morning. In the gameplay trailer, I think it's pretty safe to say that the main game of Security Breach will happen over one very long night in the Pizzaplex. I mean, think about it. If Gregory got lost at night in the giant mall, the giant Pizzaplex, why would he want to stay there for five nights? It it doesn't make sense. I also believe that this is the first time in the entire franchise that the minutes are displayed on the timer, on the clock. So that could hint towards the nights being a lot longer, therefore us needing to constantly check exactly what time it is instead of just 1am. We don't know if it's 101 or if it's 159. As to how long each hour is going to be, I don't know. Some people guess that it's going to be one hour equals one real life hour. I don't think so. I feel like that would make for a very long game, but at the same time, if this only does take place over one night, you gotta stretch out that, you know, that runtime for the entirety of the game. Moving on to the tabs, we have the cameras, the map, the inventory, and the logs. Starting off with the cameras, we can see that there are at least six cameras when we are inside Monty's Gator Golf. As we can see in the screenshot, it is one of the greens on Monty's golf course. It appears that we can switch between the cameras on this tab, but only the ones that are in close proximity to us on the mini-map. We can also increase and decrease the zoom on the cameras using the L stick on the PlayStation and it also seems like the cameras are able to pan. There's also an eye icon, presumably to turn on and off a night vision feature, though I think it is pretty safe to say that that will be a night mode feature. We can see that the eye is kind of grayed out, meaning that we're in the daytime, and we do know that the building goes into a nighttime mode because we see Moondrop emerging when it is nighttime. So I think when the building goes into nighttime mode, I think we can click on the icon of the eye, activate it, it'll turn white or something, and then we can use night vision. There's a lot of boxes in the cameras, I don't know why. I believe the white and gray boxes that you see on the watch are most likely just placeholder images, placeholder, you know, 
uh, locations for buttons. You can see that the L stick near the zoom, where you zoom in and out for the cameras, is also in one of these boxes. And we know that this footage from the gameplay trailer is kind of old. So I'm just taking a guess here and say that Stuol at that time of development didn't have those icons built into the game just yet. Moving on to the map tab. We don't actually see this one, nor do we see the inventory nor the logs tab, but we can definitely take a guess at what they are. I think the map is probably one of the easiest ones to take a stab at. It's most likely a much larger zoomed out version of the mini map that we see on the cameras tab. Presumably it'll display the entirety of the room, maybe the floor, maybe even the entirety of the mall. The inventory is also kind of simple. I'm guessing in this new FNAF game we're able to pick up items such as keys, key cards, maybe even the flashlight that Vanessa gives us. We do know that she gives us a flashlight. We can also assume that she gives us a walkie talkie. So this could emphasize the idea that the watch is for staff members only and that she she gave us this watch. The logs, I'm not quite sure. If I had to take a guess, I'm guessing it's gonna be lower elements, like documents, blueprints, audio logs, or any other lower heavy items. I think basic items such as, again, keys, key cards, flashlight, whatever, will go in the inventory slot, and then anything related to lower will go in the log section. And then we have some icons down at the bottom of the watch. Starting off with what is probably the most simple to understand icon on the watch, the flashlight battery. Whether this is a battery for the flashlight that we have physically in our hands, or the night vision flashlight, I'm not sure. Unless there is some form of link between the flashlight we hold as Gregory and the watch, I am assuming that this is the night vision battery. Though to be fair, it could very well just be the flashlight battery for the physical flashlight that we hold. And then we have a blue Freddy icon with a lightning bolt in it, and it's at 100% charge. I see this as being one of two things, either the battery for the watch itself, since the watch is themed around Freddy Fazbear, it could be the charge and the battery for the watch itself, or it could be the charge for Glamrock Freddy himself. As we all know by now, Glamrock Freddy is actually going to be helping us throughout the entirety of this game. We'll go further in depth with Glamrock Freddy in a little bit, but the this could be the battery for the animatronic of Glamrock Freddy himself. It would be weird if these guys were in on battery though, I will say, so that's the only flaw I can really think of with this idea. And then we have an attention icon with the number 8 displayed in it. This one kind of stumped me. I have a few ideas though. It could be the number of times we can call Glamrock Freddy to help us. It could be the number of times we have to call Glamrock Freddy before his battery runs out. Or it could be the number of threats in the area. The only problem I see with that, however, is that the time is only 12.09 a.m. Based off of basic FNAF knowledge, nine minutes into the night, I don't think we're gonna have eight threats on us already. So this one definitely has me a bit stumped. Leave me your theories down below. What do you think this attention icon could mean? And then we have an icon for two tickets. I feel like this is another self-explanatory icon. We most likely get tickets after we successfully complete a minigame or an attraction in the Pizzaplex, such as Monty's Golf Course or Roxanne's Raceway, and I'm guessing we can spend these tickets at either an ATM, since we do see a lot of ATMs sprinkled throughout the map, so I assume they're not pointless this time around. Or, simply, we could just collect them at the Gameplay Trailer's Collectible Counter, or the Phaser Blast Counter, which we saw in one of Darko's charity screenshots. Now moving on to the Glamrock Freddy icon, this is very similar to the official icon for the game FNAF Security Breach, which I think is very intentional. I think this icon is what we press when we want to call over Glamrock Freddy to help us out with anything. Whether an obstacle is blocking our path, an animatronic is blocking our path, or Vanessa herself is blocking our path. I wouldn't be surprised if the number 8 icon in the triangle, the attention triangle, is how many more presses we have of that Glamrock Freddy icon button. Since combining the two, they do create the official icon, the logo, for the game, Security Breach. And now I'm gonna finish off with some other subtle details I see on the watch. On the right side, we can see four holes in the wrist watch. If I had to take a guess, I'm guessing that this is a speaker, or more likely, a walkie-talkie. Like I brought up earlier, we know that Vanessa has a walkie-talkie, a radio on her, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get this watch from her and it has a built-in radio. And either the two big green buttons on the side of the wristwatch on the left, or the big red button on the bottom left is how we talk back to her. 
Not like shout at her swears, but like communicate, you know, respond to her. And that is my deep dive into Gregory's Freddy Fazbear themed wristwatch. What did you think? I know not the most enticing, the most exciting thing to start off Security Breach Week with, but trust me, I want to talk a lot about this game because I really do believe it's going to be good. I really hope it's going to be good. And usually in FNAF news videos or in screenshot analysis videos, I just don't have the time to talk about everything I want to talk about. I mean, heck, I just spent 21 minutes talking about a freaking watch. So SB Week is going to start off kind of slow, kind of boring, you could say, with some of the topics. Really? A watch? What are you going to talk about next? The freaking mall tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, so tomorrow I want to talk about the rooms and the mall itself. What purpose it serves in the game, in the story, and what's going to happen to it at the end of the game. So tell me your theories. What do you think about the watch, and what do you think is going to happen to the building at the end of the game? And if you don't want to miss day two of SB Week, or heck, the entire rest of it, subscribe. Also, if you made it to the end of the video, clearly you liked it. So hit that like button. And again, tell me your theories on security breach in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the map. Goodbye.